Hello! Welcome! My watch does run on WAN show time. Don't worry. <laughs> Hello! My audio may be desynced again after you all messed with me during the last show. So we will get that sorted if that is the case. Huge shout out to Microsoft for the Windows XP sweater. It is freaking phenomenal. If you missed that, I posted it on Twitter. They send out, they started sending out last year Windows ugly sweaters, and last year's was Windows 98. And this year, it's Windows XP, my favorite operating system of all time. And so I'm super stoked for that. Welcome to Streamer News. I'm using a new setup here. I've got a couple things uh, tweaked a little bit. So I'm just trying to make sure everything's working here. We got to keep this show, show a little short. I got to stick to the one hour time format as I actually have to leave like as soon as the audio or audio, as soon as the show is over. Uh, so we're hopefully going to get right into the topics here. I do have a couple little things to show off uh, during the unboxing segment again. Uh, but just getting everything running here. You got a coffee espresso ad. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Moving on, we got uh, quite a few topics. Nothing too exciting, you know, nothing too dramatic happened this week. But I did want to get into some stuff. But I did want to remind you that tomorrow night, Saturday, December 14th at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, we are having another Discord community game night over at eposvox.com slash Discord. And we're doing Unreal Tournament 2004, which you can get cheaply on Steam or GOG, and both of them will be compatible with each other. We're sticking to this, the maps that come in the game, so you don't have to download anything extra, and we will be giving away a couple copies if you show up early and don't have them. Come join us to play some freaking awesome Unreal Tournament. It's going to be a blast. Go check it out. We're going to have a lot of fun. And we're going to get right into the normal topics here on Streamer News. This is my bi-weekly other than holidays you know not allowing for it bi-weekly live news show about all things relating to streamers and streamer news and all of that right through so starting out here twitch has officially rolled out their custom bits badges and uh emote reward slots for viewers who contribute enough bits to your channel I, you it starts at uh one and 100 bit tiers and then it goes up to a thousand 5 million bits if someone's crazy enough to contribute 5 million bits to your channel on Twitch. That's a thing. <laughs> and so you will be able to customize the little badge that shows up next to their name for having contributed that many bits. And then you also get extra emote slots for people who have contributed those bits and you unlock those and can add more emotes as well. Twitch is really rolling out. They also have a holiday thing where if someone subs to your channel, then five other people get to use the sub emotes for the holiday season or whatever. They're doing a lot to make sure that other people, you know, that viewers, streamers and viewers get a lot more involvement with your channel with regards to, uh, with, uh, you know, emotes and little visual flares and, you know, just to feel like they're a part of your channel or something like that. Uh, that's pretty much it with this. You get to upload and name them. They have the sizes available on the page. There is one 100, I believe 1K, 5K, 10K, 25K, 50K, and it just keeps going up from there. And you can keep chasing, you know, chasing all of the bits from there. How much money is 5 million bits? Well, I'm pretty sure they're a cent per bit, at least that the viewer or that the streamer gets. Uh, that's like $500, I think. $5,000. I don't remember. I'm not doing math right now. I got very little sleep last night. I am. We're super rushed today. We have a crazy busy schedule today. And I got my sleep was very sporadic this week. So I am running on fumes this week, guys. <laughs> All right, switching over to a, another topic that isn't related to Twitch at all. Western Digital, one of our partners for hard drives, for hard drive, you know, for bulk storage, is talking about their plans moving forward for really high capacity storage. We're talking 24 terabytes per drive, 
and beyond. There's been some discussion over the past few years about them using what's called energy assisted storage which means that they either heat up the platters or they use microwaves to basically manipulate the platters in order to be able to contain that much data density on the discs and keep them safe and things like that and so they are currently juggling between hamr which is heat assisted magnetic recording or mamr hammer or mammer <laughs> which is ma uh, microwave magnetic recording uh and they're currently trying out both and they'll use whatever's right for the time up till now they they've introduced this technology but they've actually not been using it for their hard drives just yet they don't feel like it's necessary yet but they do plan on pushing up to 24 and 30 terabyte hard drives and at that point they'll need this kind of energy assisted technology in order to make that storage you know possible and then they are still targeting a roadmap to get up to 50 terabytes per hard drive 50 terabytes in one three and a half inch hard drive that is bonkers obviously the absolutely bonkers every time i say bonkers now i have to like recreate that meme <laughs> Uh, obviously the main application for this are bulk data centers and you know mass storage arrays but as long as they're not absurdly expensive which so far as they scale you know 12 terabyte 14 terabytes they're not absurdly expensive data hoarders such as myself might be able to take advantage of them and just really load up some crazy storage servers just keep in mind you do need parity and redundancy so just buying one 50 terabyte hard drive doesn't necessarily get you 50 terabytes of safe storage because then you need a f another 50 terabyte to kind of balance it out and things like that and you know the world is moving towards flash storage for a lot of purposes you know for fast storage for cache for the random read writes but for bulk data storage that needs to just kind of be written and then sit there and then be read again without, you know, super fast IO or latency. Spinning rust, spinning rust as it's referred to, are, you know, still going to be hanging out for a little bit, I think. What's up, Coalition Gaming? Thanks to everybody tuning into the stream. Uh, we're moving on to a little bit more Twitch news here. So the Twitch new, the new stream manager or Twitch dashboard has finally released. We've been talking about it on a couple of the streamer news episodes thus far and it's pretty cool in my opinion you get this nice customizable layout where you get the stream preview you get quick actions to edit the stream information make a clip run an ad break raid someone uh, replay a clip if you have that uh it's an extension in a obs plugin uh, and manage your other extensions they got notifications about settings you can preview it you got your chat you got your stream events you got information about your stream at the top here they have a lot of information that in my opinion is actually much more like easily accessible and readily available to your eyes when you're streaming and managing a stream and it's it's received a lot of backlash and i'm not entirely sure why i think people are just resistant to change and they really liked how they had it set up in the other one but i actually really like how this is set up and it's modular so if i want the quick actions you know move down here i can do that if i want to move the chat say over here and now the stream preview is really small so actually i can move that above the stream preview and have you know my event list really long in case i need to monitor event lists and things like that it's completely customizable but if you do something like hide the stream preview player apparently people have been struggling to figure out that you can still just go here and show player or if you just get rid of it supposedly you can just get rid of it entirely i've not really seen that capability but people seem to just not pay attention when they're getting rid of stuff and then think that you have to use this secret in order to get it but there is the kunami code embedded in the studio dashboard where you can get all of these other things so if you're on the studio dashboard i hit the wrong button i need to click something else and undo it real quick here up up down down left right left right ba accesses a hidden menu which allows you to do things i'm gonna make this bigger here like hide individual panels chat panel preview panel you can hide and show all of these panels if you want to just disable them entirely and so that's pretty cool and to me imo that should be an advanced menu i don't think it should be necessarily hidden behind Konami code because that's not very efficient to actually enable this but you can show and hide all of this right there i think it's really handy like this is what everyone's wanted from obs's layout in the first place and especially once you make it big like that and get all these like nice little sections ugh, it's just perfect imo so i don't know but it's been out it's got a konami code if you're interested uh and then they have this whole article detailing you know everything you need to know about it the quick actions which are really cool the quick clip that button uh, 
all of these different things they have a whole thing kind of explaining it if you want to learn more one more piece of twitch news for today we want to move along here now i originally thought he had uh, slasher had posted about this before and i had assumed it was a joke because he was kind of memeing about it with dr lupo but apparently dr lupo tim the tap man and lyric have all signed on to stay on twitch and according to uh rod here who is at slasher he's an industry guy who always has this kind of inside information the contracts for them to stay on twitch are actually worth millions of dollars which is what you would assume like if they're going to be paid millions to move from twitch to mixer then of course they're going to be paid millions to stay on twitch instead of moving to mixer uh, but a lot of you know there's been so many announcements thrown in all different directions about what platforms people are going to and things like that and so twitch is you know making the next steps to actually invest themselves into keeping people around so that they don't get poached to other platforms which is pretty cool it's about time and if you think that mixer is the only platform when you stop talking the music in the background stops too well that's not supposed to be the case hey i know why i turned it off i fixed it like i said i'm on a totally new setup guys i will have a video covering it very soon but i'm on a to totally new setup uh, anyway if you think that mixer is the only people paying people to come to your platform you seem to have forgotten the almighty that was a joke facebook gaming disguised ghost disguised ghost disguised toast has actually just announced that he's moving to Facebook gaming. Facebook has been really pushing their game streaming platform for a while. And so they've brought people on board like Level Cap, uh, Trade Chat, Disguise Toast. There's actually a pretty big list of people who have major YouTube presences or who at one point had major Twitch presences who were paid to come over to Facebook and live stream there. Now I've made fun of it from time to time because honestly, if I'm giving my true opinions here, Every time I tune into a Facebook stream, I get really sad because I see people who have a million plus subscribers on YouTube who are streaming to like 50 people on Facebook and they don't seem like they're having a good time. And they're always f streaming at these bizarre times like 5 a.m. and they just don't seem happy and they're stuck doing it. But apparently it pays a metric crap ton of money. Like I haven't got exact numbers, but the amount of money that people have been able to get, even who don't run, you know, ninja or dr lupo you know size streams the people who have been paid to come over to stream there to stream to 50 people mind you are getting paid enough to pay off their houses and to you know bankroll their channels and things like that i'd probably do it i'd move a stream to facebook in a heartbeat for that kind of money i would still be frustrated at nobody being there but i get it now i understand so another person is still going to Facebook and I will say for all of the memeing that I do about how few people seem to watch it and they had some controversy come up because I mean it's Facebook they do a lot of things wrong uh, but they had a lot of controversy come up about manipulating view counts to mislead advertisers and things like that uh, the actual Facebook gaming team which is very small it's like a it's like a five person team the Facebook gaming team has actually been doing a lot of work to build up the tools available to streamers especially if you're in the level up program like their UI honestly rivals even twitch's new stream manager like their ui is amazing they have all these kinds of integrations and all this stuff and i'm a big fan of it so i like what they're doing one more topic here regarding uh, streaming platforms stream elements which is a, an overlay service which allows you to uh you thought the beard was musical <laughs> uh if, sorry uh stream elements which i haven't really covered enough it's been on my to-do list for literally all year and i feel bad because they've actually asked me to cover them a couple times and i was just like yeah i was already doing it and then i never get around to it but stream elements which does basically it handles all of your overlays on a website so that you don't need to manage it in obs like you add it all on the website and then add it as a browser source to obs for the most part what i've seen uh they now finally support mixer and their obs plugin obs.live is eventually getting the mixer upgrade soon uh, but they are getting mixer support and finally getting in on this and this is one of the problems that causes me to not recommend some of these extra services is i can't give a blanket recommendation if they only support one program or platform it's like yeah use this awesome tool and then you're all excited for it you're like yeah i'm gonna use it for my mixer streams but it's only for twitch users and then you just got like 
you're just disappointed and I, I don't like it when they only support specific programs I understand why that may be at times and obviously you have to you know like phone support or operating system support you kind of have to put the majority of your de development time into what will make you the most money and net you the most users and if you don't have the resources to do mix or whatever but about time it's there to go I did want to just look at chat here as Drew Linsky says a friend of mine was offered half a million to stream on Facebook minimum of 20 hours a week for one year all right I'm gonna do the math on this which I should be able to do in my head but I am not doing at this exact moment 250 grand uh divided by 52 weeks in a year that is $4,800 a week divided by 20 hours is 240 uh, my math could be totally wrong here I'm just rushing this in the calculator that is over $240 per hour not bad not bad at all and when you consider you know that's 250 mil for one year or 250 mil holy sh <laughs> holy crap $250,000 for one year that's a pretty good wage and that's on top of any donations you may get that's on top of any other job you do because you don't just stream you do other things for money as a social media person that's not a bad deal for 600k subs on YouTube that might be pretty low for that account but you never know how that translates half a million is 500,000 yeah it is so double that that's $500 an hour because I'm an idiot there you go like I said I'm running on low well that's fine that would be really good cash and yes uh someone asking my Twitter my Twitter is Epos Fox my username everywhere is Epos Fox my name is Epos Fox yeah 500k so yeah so ten thousand dollars a month or a week five hundred dollars an hour I would stream on a platform that has one user for that and just not care that no one is watching that's still a 40 hour job because most streamers spend two to one hours prepping for what they do yeah but eh, I mean you also do all these other things for work and for jobs and stuff so yes but also no so this is the halfway point for the show as always I'm gonna be breaking into a couple unboxings here I need to go grab something I forgot to grab so I'm gonna this is gonna be literally one second here every episode I try to cover anything that you viewers send me to my PO box over at PO box 459 Jeffersonville Indiana zip code 47131 and it just so happened that yesterday and I forgot to I went ahead and opened it up instead of unboxing it here on the channel but tech loose sent me this dope kitty cat neon light which I'm pretty stoked to get set up in the background I love little lights like these I know it's stupid but I love little lights like those so super shout out to tech loose thank you for that uh, I also picked up this was on a Black Friday sale I got me a super meat boy from fan gamer hell yeah I uh, got a couple things in for uh doing review e work projects I've got the cloner Alliance uh Flint 4kp plus and I have a couple of their other uh capture cards this one is their 4k pass-through capture card that captures 1080p 60 over USB-C it has line in line out and mic in so you have audio routing and 4k pass through 1080p capture competitor to the Elgato HD 60s the Razer Ripsaw HD the live gamer ultra so I'll have a review on that coming in time I got stuff all around me the GTX 1650 super which is officially the cheapest way to get NVENC on your streaming computer coming soon I've been promising that for a little bit with any of these things I don't make any promises as to when they will show up on the channel because I've been very behind with the holidays things have been absolutely crazy uh, uh. then mass drop wow you can't see that at all well you can kind of see it mass drop had a cyber monday cyber week sale on the hd 58x headphones I used the 6XX from Sennheiser as my daily drivers and everyone said these are just different enough that they're worth you know checking out so I picked up a pair I do have an affiliate link to that that will be added to the description of the VOD I'm excited to check those out probably not a video on those 
Mr. Ross Biden asks, uh, I don't know why I said Mr. That's not there. Did you ever get the hardcover sword and shield hardback guide I sent you? I did not. I just checked my PO box yesterday and I did not see it there. Uh, shoot me a tweet or an email or something and we will try to follow up. Uh, someone asks if the Invink is better on the 1660 Super or 1660 Ti. They are exactly the same. That subscriber notification is not supposed to have audio, Streamlabs. I disabled that. Thanks, Streamlabs. All right, lastly, we have one that I have not unboxed yet. And this one will be a proper unboxing because I'm pretty stoked about it. We get the box open here. But yeah, Rose Biden, shoot me an email with tracking number or something. And we will get that sorted out because I did not get that. That would be really freaking cool. So I hope it didn't get lost in shipping. I did have a week or so where I didn't check my PO box at all. So it's possible it got sent back to you. That would really suck. Um, Cause I don't get any notifications when stuff shows up. So I just have to keep going and checking every day. And it's, you know, not next to my house. So, but shoot me an email or something. We will follow that up. Cause I really appreciate that you sent that. I just didn't get it. Ah. Ah. All right, we have here the Metal Storm Collector's Edition. This is an NES game being released with the Collector's Edition from Retrobit. They sent this out for me to check out. So super shout out to Retrobit. I'll have a link of that getting posted in chat by my mods. Uh, Retrobit does a lot of, you know, retro slash modern gaming kind of mixes here that I am always really excited to check out. So this was an NES game, but the Japanese version had a lot more content and things like that that wasn't released here in the States. And so this has all of it together. And they've done a few collector's editions. I've picked them up in the past. Um, specifically right now, I have the R-Type and R-Type 2, I believe, collector's edition, but most of those didn't come with a whole lot. Um, whereas this one is really well done here. So I'm just checking on the box what it has here just so I know what's going on. So we get this nice, sick display box to start out with. And even the inside box, really sick little shiny box going on here. Do -do 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 -do. Really well packaged. And then inside, nice little combination of things. We get this giant, absolutely giant. Ow. Metal Storm pin. Looks really cool. And in case you didn't notice in my Retro Room Tour, I love pins and stickers, but pins are really sick. And we got a really sick looking figurine here for Metal Storm. It's about the size of an amiibo. I can get this open here. It's a little bit bigger than an amiibo. Uh, Andrew Hayes says most platforms don't support higher than 1080p. That is entirely not true. I'm streaming 4K right now. And even Twitch supports streaming 4K and 1440p and things like that. You just are limited by bit rate. So generally, it's not a good idea. But you can do it if you're doing like a desktop stream or a coding stream or something like that. You get the nice figurine here. Like I said, it's about the, it's a little bit bigger than an amiibo, but pretty sick. You know, it's a little thin and it's not positional. You know, like you can't reposition it articulating, but very nice. Going to look really sick on a shelf. The colors are absolutely gorgeous. It's a little lighter weight than I expected, but that's fine. And then in the back, we have more. We have our certificate of authenticity, which is, I, I laugh at, just like I laughed at at my DBZ collector's edition, but this is number, I have number 10 out of 3000. Okay then, that's a pretty low number. And then you have a couple little basically postcards or like lithographs or something, but they're postcards. People collect these, I guess. I'm into the figures and the games, not cardboard, although they're fun to display. And then you get the nice little NES case here. Pretty slick. They, of course, can't put the official Nintendo logo on it, but it is still, you know, it's like you're buying a new NES game in 2019, which is absolutely Bonkers, 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 bonkers. Whee! 
glorious shiny case nice little holographic art open this bad boy up unfortunately i cannot open it from the bottom i prefer to open cases from the bottom because you always bend up the little front tab here that's always mm, hard to watch there's really no way to avoid that then inside you get a full color manual hello full color manual which is pretty cool you get this nice big ass poster here for metal storm and it's really thick paper too really nice most of the posters that comes with games are just like thin easy to tear paper this is like almost plastic feeling it might be laminated but gorgeous art to display it's definitely going up in the retro room i still have a little bit of uh so i have a little bit of poster space left available to me i don't know how that was supposed to go back together there we go and then lastly before we finish this unboxing you get the nes card itself in the protector sleeve and it's a blue card which looks absolutely gorgeous again they don't have the official nintendo logo on it but it is sick and of course you can pop it in a real nes and play it and i will have some footage of that shown over on my gaming channel at youtube.com slash box gaming if you want to check out how the game looks all right i'm gonna run a couple of ads while i put all of this mess back up and we will finish off we have a couple big topics to finish off today's episode so let's do this. here we go i hope it works of course not why would it work uh one second <laughs> hdr is where it's at dad dad dad, dad take over your fear Streamer News is brought to you by Owned. Owned provides everything you need to build your streaming brand. From individual stream assets and overlays to full revamp packages covering not just your stream, but your YouTube channel and social media as well, custom avatars, and more. They can even set you up with a full website for your brand with matching graphics, web hosting, setup, a free subdomain, and regular backups. Heck, they can even provide desktop wallpapers to match your brand so that your branding whenever your screen is shown is always on point as well. Check out Owned over at epostvox.gg slash own3d or the link in the video description and check out their Halloween sale to save any more. Thanks to Owned for sponsoring Streamer News. for any length of time, you've probably heard about TubeBuddy. Or at least I'd think so, but apparently 70% of my watch time comes from viewers who aren't subscribed. So this is for you. First, well, get subscribed. Maybe enable notifications. Come on now. Second, check out TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy is an incredible toolkit to help you manage your YouTube channel and improve your productivity and your video's performance quite easily. You can update videos in bulk, optimize your SEO, syndicate to social media, back up your metadata, and more, all with a simple browser extension. Head to eposvox.com slash TubeBuddy to learn more and download it for free. They cover educational topics for YouTubers on their YouTube channel, and I cover YouTube news on their blog as well. That's eposvox.com slash TubeBuddy to download it for free, but do subscribe first, all right? All right. Thank you so much for the $5 super chat from Castlemania Ryan. Thank you very much. Cheers to you too. 
There you go. Ice is here, so the stream can start. Well, the stream's already halfway over, my dude. You missed most of it. But we got some really good topics coming up here in a moment. Just checking through chat, making sure that, you know, no one has anything they need. Thank you, Kujo, for sharing my 4K streaming video. That is a great video showing you how to live stream in 4K and what you need, what the, you know, what the considerations are, things like that. Let's jump into our next topic, which is, of course, Dr. Disrespect. Uh, through his talent advertising agency, which is partnered with Skybound Entertainment, is partnering with the team that made AMC's The Walking Dead TV show to make some sort of TV show or general show. They don't know exactly what it will be yet, but they want to make a show. It may be animated. It may not. And it might tackle the origins of Dr. Disrespect. Now, originally, I would say, okay, just go watch Machinima Respawn and see the original videos, the original, you know, reveal of Dr. Disrespect as a character, and you won't need that. But since Machinima got rebranded and they took down all of their videos, much to my dismay, you can't do that anymore, which is really upsetting to me. So maybe it'll be interesting, but really the origin of the character is he needed a shtick for a video. So he said, I'm going to be 80s cheese, Dr. Disrespect. Yeah. And We'll see what comes of it. <laughs> All right, next up, I had a couple requests to talk about this, and obviously, I don't really have the time to, or you know, before the show came up to dive in and actually test any of this yet. The walking disrespect. I love it. I didn't have the time to test any of this yet, but AMD has announced their 5500 XT graphics card, which is another even more budget-oriented one, and that one might be one I can pick up so I can further mess around with... Uh, words with the amf encoder and the encoder streaming side but amd also released their new adrenaline 2020 adrenaline is their graphics software driver package tool set that has you know it's like geforce experience but for amd it's amd adrenaline this is their 2020 release which has new features and improvements to existing features uh, they do claim that this version runs 12 percent faster than the 2019 launch version which is Quite interesting and contains drivers for Detroit Become Human and a few other things. Uh, some cool notes overall. They've completely revised and redone the Radeon settings UI for a completely new UI and including the overlay, the heads up display when you're in game. Hopefully that means it'll work now because it was not very reliable before as well. Uh, but they have that working. They've also introduced a new Radeon boost feature. Uh, which will allow you to adjust some game resolutions on the fly to keep your frame rate up. But that's a little weird to have as a feature of their software system, given that the only games that this will support are games that already had, for the most part, dynamic resolutions supported in the game. So I don't know if this is just an option for people who don't want to dive into their game's graphic settings to just kind of automatically enable it for you. You know, you check it and you don't have to mess with your game settings. Or if this somehow works differently than the dynamic resolution scaling that's already built into the games. Not sure. We'll have to see if Digital Foundry tests or something and find out, because I'm not going to dive into all of that too much. Uh, they did introduce integer scaling for the driver, which has been requested by all GPU manufacturers for a long time. Intel was first to jump on board and say their next generation of graphics products will contain integer scaling. And then NVIDIA was like, all right, fine, but only on RTX cards for some reason. And now AMD is on board, have released integer scaling, which helps a lot for more, you know, small detail oriented games, pixel art games, retro games. When you want to scale them up, the normal way that graphics cards that scale these games gets super blurry and interpolated and it's not very accurate. Whereas integer scaling is an exact scale to your screen size, which is completely important. And Kujo points out that the best feature of this software is that there's no login required. I didn't realize that. That is actually important. Uh, I use a Pi hole, which is an ad blocker that you set up on a Raspberry Pi for my network for to block certain things. And one of the blacklists I subscribe to keeps blocking NVIDIA services, even if I try to disable it. And so it gets really annoying whenever I'm setting up a new test bench and I go to launch GeForce Experience to download drivers. And I literally, it won't load, it blocks the login page for GeForce Experience. I don't know why I need to log in. It's absolutely frustrating as hell. I'm so glad that AMD doesn't require it, I guess. Uh, it also introduces uh, anti-lag for DX9 games for pre-9 
Navi cards, and then they finally enabled Radeon image sharpening for DirectX 11 games, which is pretty cool. They also have a new feature, AMD Link, which is your, you know, basically GeForce Now. You're, you're able to stream your video games from your gaming PC anywhere in the world, be that another PC on your network or even to your phone when you're in the coffee shop. This isn't entirely new as a concept for anybody in particular, but it's new to AMD for, you know, this driver update, and it's pretty cool to see them introduced. Now, I did see a couple people in the OBS Discord server talking about that this version uh, introduces a new UI with a UI change for their streaming stuff, for Relive, for their your ability to game record and stream, and improves it quite a bit. So I am super stoked to take a look at that, because if you may remember, earlier this year, I took a look at Relive back in July-ish on the Navi cards, and it was a dumpster fire. And it apparently had been a dumpster fire for years. So I'm really hoping this update had revamped that a little bit so it's actually functional and works a little bit better. But we'll see. We'll see. I don't know if I believe it. All right, so I believe this is the last topic of today. Like I said, I needed to keep today's stream short so I can immediately leave the house and go pick up my wife from somewhere. <laughs> but the last topic of today's stream is, of course... I couldn't avoid talking about the new Xbox, the Xbox Series X, or as someone in our Discord server started calling it, the sex box. Okay, then. So it looks like a better ventilated trash can Mac Pro, except it has the disc slot on the side. So maybe instead of a trash can, it's a tissue box. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, but it, it's basically like a small little, you know, rectangular prism that a lot of people are going to have trouble fitting in their entertainment systems because you think the disk drive is like that tall and so you add the other half of the box on top of it like it's bigger than your average entertainment center shelf it's going to be taller than your average console but then it's you know nowhere near as thick or deep so i think they're just expecting that you set it up next to your tv kind of like a big router looking thing they are introducing it with a newly designed wireless controller which is pretty cool. I'm excited to test it out as well as the new Elite 2 controller, which has improved D-pads and paddles and things like that. And both of these, I believe, excuse me, are supposed to be uh, backwards compatibility or backwards compatible with both Windows 10 computers, of course, and the original Xbox One family of hardware. So I'm excited to try that out. I've actually had kind of a not so great history with the original xbox one's controllers i've just had a generally bad time with them my control freaks are breaking down apparently i didn't realize that uh but i've had a bad time with the xbox one's controllers so i'm excited to try out the new one specs wise this is running on zen amd's zen 2 rdna hardware for cpu and then navi base graphics for the graphics cards it will have hardware accelerated ray tracing it'll have this new feature called variable rate shaders which are apparently very important and call of duty modern warfare already has it but i haven't really looked into what exactly that means it'll have an nvme ssd or next generation ssd as they keep calling it it'll have an auto low latency mode as well as dynamic latency input mode which will allow developers to further reduce um, input delay for your controllers for actually controlling the game and this should help introduce with your tvs once you upgrade to modern tvs as it also has variable refresh rate support and it will be carrying the HDMI 2.1 spec, which will allow it to carry the new Visa uh, Variable Refresh Adaptive Sync. It will also allow it to produce a 4K 60 Hertz signal with the possibility of, well, they're guaranteeing that some games will run at 4K 60, but then there's the possibility of some games running at 4K 120 FPS, which is pretty bonkers. And then they have the potential of outputting uh, 8k signals as well because this is all basically what's in the spec of hdmi 2.1 so it can go up to 8k 60 it can do 4k 60 it can do 4k 120 and it can do adaptive sync so that's pretty cool uh and then it will of course have a plethora of cloud related features and streaming and things like that uh there's not a whole lot of information right now about what else it's coming with it still clearly has a disk drive but they've been talking a lot about you know still having a next generation console that's a lower spec one that's purely meant to stream games or purely meant to download games instead of playing them from disc and so i think the naming was specific this is the xbox series x which i think because the games uh, phil spencer had already or major nelson i don't remember which had already tweeted about taking home the next generation xbox and playing it right now which very heavily implies that pretty much any ongoing game that you can play 
on Xbox One X, you can play on this new one, which means I do think the Xbox Series X name is meant to imply like this is the next generation of uh, Xbox One X hardware. So you have the Series X, so the One X, the Series X, and then that leaves them the potential to just keep upgrading this within this series of hardware to kind of keep it all together. And so we could see upgrades in the future and then we could see lower end uh, Xbox hardware that has, you know, lower specs just for streaming, lower specs just for downloads only, things like that, that I think we'll see in the future. Yeah, it was Phil Spencer that tweeted about taking it home. All right. Now, there's no talk about streaming support on it. And I really think that it would be in Microsoft's best interest if they developed a really freaking baller streaming app for it for mixer that was basically obs on xbox that was a big fully featured you got scenes you got alerts you've got all of this but made super easy kind of like twitch's twitch studio program where it was you know everything easy auto setup for you where you can create a truly baller live stream on the xbox series x and have that launch ready to go because that would drive streamers to mixer and it would drive streamers to using their hardware for streaming which would be a win-win for everyone so i'm pretty excited for the new xbox this next generation transition is going to get pretty crazy with the Xbox Series X and no one having a clue what to call that. The PlayStation 5, apparently a few years later, the PlayStation 5 Pro, and then a few years later, the PlayStation 6. It's going to get weird. I hate these transitional times because I always have the fear of missing out going on, but very optimistic and stoked regardless. Super shout out to, uh, where'd the name go? David Wilson for the $10 super chat money for dumpster fire extinguisher or beer, whatever works. We'll get, we'll, we'll get a dumpster fire extinguisher then. Let's go for it. OBS on Xbox. You heard it here first. Streamer news exclusive world premiere. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much all I had for you today, guys. Like I said, wanted to make it a short show. Super shout out to uh, Tech Loose for sending me the dope kitty lights. Shout out to Retrobit for the Metal Storm Collector's Edition. Like I said, I'll have a full video on the gaming channel. Just it'll be an excerpt of this, but with gameplay and stuff like that. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Streamer News. If you have topics you want to see me cover, be sure to tweet them at me or comment below on this video. Uh, hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education. We've got some cool videos coming. Assuming I can get them fit in around all of the crazy holidays. It's really been disrupting my schedule. A lot of stuff coming. We did have a question about uh, the kids situation. It is due April 30th, in case you were unaware. Uh, if you're interested in sending in anything for the unboxing segment, you can do so to P.O. Box 459, Jeffersonville, Indiana, zip code 47131. And after the holiday, we will be releasing a baby registry kind of thing, but we don't want it to interfere with what family might be getting right now or anything like that. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. It does not need dual monitors. It will do an overlay just like the current Xbox One and PlayStation does already. You don't need dual monitors for console streaming. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.